So we've seen how you can edit notes, their positions, their lengths and their velocities. But there are many other types of data that can be conveyed in MIDI. And to edit those, we're going to look at the Hyperdraw panel. You can access it by clicking this little icon at the bottom left of the piano roll. This panel is dedicated to editing aspects of the MIDI data, which are not usually shown in the piano roll. And these are called control values. You can change which control value is displayed with the drop down on the left. And as you can see, we're looking at note velocity right now. So each note has a corresponding orange line, which can lie anywhere from zero to 127 on this vertical axis. And I can drag one of the lines up or down to increase or decrease velocity. You can see that the color of the MIDI note is changing correspondingly. Velocity is the only control value that can also be seen and edited in the ordinary piano roll in the form of colored notes. Often it will be more convenient to edit velocity with the velocity tool in the piano roll without having to open up the hyperdraw panel. However, there are advantages to doing velocity edits in hyperdraw. For example, you can set the velocities of multiple notes at once by dragging out a line. And that makes it easy to set all notes at the same velocity or to create crescendos and diminuendos. You might be wondering why the velocity scale goes from 0 to 127. It seems like quite an arbitrary number. Why not 1 to 100 or 1 to 1000? Well, MIDI is quite an old specification. In fact, it was invented in the 1980s for the first digitally controlled polyphonic synthesizer. And back in those days, every bit of data was precious because computer processors and memory were so expensive. So using only 128 values, if you include zero, that meant that MIDI could be handled by 8-bit systems, and we still use the same standard today. There are lots of other MIDI control values that you can change using Hyperdraw, but I just want to show you two more now. If you have a MIDI keyboard, chances are it has two wheels, one marked pitch bend and the other marked modulation. So pitch bend predictably lets you make expressive pitch bends, which sound like this on my current synth sound. The modulation wheel or mod wheel isn't assigned to any specific parameter. Instead, you can usually choose which parameter it changes. In my current synth patch, I've mapped the mod wheel to alter the frequency cutoff point of a filter. Don't worry if you don't understand what that means yet. It's easier to explain these sorts of things through sound. So here's what it sounds like when I move my keyboard's mod wheel on this sound. So let's record in some mod wheel and pitch bend movement to see what it sounds like. <laughs> so I'll open up this region in the piano roll <clears throat> and I'm going to look at the modulation data first. So as you can see it's recorded in the movements of the mod wheel that I did, the fairly random movements. If I switch to pitch bend, now you can see the pitch bend movements that I've done. I can edit what I just did by clicking to add points or remove them and dragging to move them around. These points are called nodes and we're going to encounter them in a slightly different situation when we come to look at automation. So using this knowledge, let's add some mod wheel data to my existing synth pattern. You can add modulation and pitch bend data to any MIDI region. You don't have to record it in. You can just program it from scratch, as you can with notes. So if you don't own a MIDI keyboard, that's no problem. You can still have fun with the modulation wheel and pitch wheel data. So I'll just program in a few peaks and troughs. And let's see how that sounds. Thank you. 
In the next video we're going to look at a useful tool for automatically fixing the timing of your MIDI notes, which is known as quantizing.